is this something that I want you at home thinking about? Absolutely not. My God. We as doctors learn a lot about the world from our patients. Sometimes it's not so useful information, but sometimes it's absolutely necessary for our survival. Today, we're gonna go through a Reddit thread that talks about just that. Different specialties talk about their own experiences and takeaways that they've incorporated into their own lives. Dermatology consultant. Refusal to wear a normal swimsuit for outside swimming. Instead, uses a full wetsuit and wears maximum factor sunscreen on face, hands, feet, etc. My advice? Wear some high SPF, as long as it's not super pricey. Cover up when possible and stay in the shade. You don't need a wetsuit, although it kind of looks cool. Michael Phelps. There are actually three predictive values that I use in my office for uh, skin cancer risk. One is, do you go indoor tanning? Very high risk. Do you have over 50 moles in your body? High risk. And if you had over five sunburns in your life, as you get more of each of these, the higher your risk. But if you can avoid them all together, do it. Just do it. Do it. Poem, won't ever pick up another cigarette. Critical care will always tell my loved ones what my wishes are and update them if they change. Oh my God, these are so right. Never smoke a cigarette. On my third year rotations as a medical student, I was working in Coney Island Hospital on the internal medicine floors. Anytime I was taking care of patients, almost all of them who were admitted had a significant smoking history. But if there's something you can do, one thing immediately to improve your life, stop smoking. It will improve your skin, your sex life, your athletic performance, your cognitive abilities. Stop smoking and you get all these benefits. Please do it, stop. Stop for me, stop for you, stop for your family. Stop for Dan. And as far as critical care goes, this is also a must. There's been so many times where I saw family members doing something for a patient that I would not want done to me. That was happening because there wasn't good communication about end of life care. So whether you're 20 years old or 120 years old, make your wishes known. If not to your family, put it in your will, put it in your power of attorney, make sure it's down somewhere. Be in control of your medical choices. General surgical resident, always pee before getting in a car. What they're saying here is if you have a full bladder and you get into a traumatic accident, your bladder can rupture and you actually are gonna have urine all across the inside of your abdominal cavity and you're gonna have to have a bladder rupture repair. Is this something that I want you at home thinking about? Absolutely not. My God, can you imagine you're about to get in a car or you're in a car and that health anxiety creeps up on you and you're like, I need to pee right now because if we crash, my bladder will rupture. No, don't think about that. Think about focusing on the road. Don't hold your urine for too long in general. There's a video about that down below, but focus on the driving. Theodora Lynn. I once asked a pediatrician how his professional influenced the way he raised his kids. He said that it only changed one thing. He wouldn't let his kids near dogs when they were babies slash infants. He said he had seen way too many cases of little kids getting bitten by dogs that people swore were completely gentle and harmless. I guess little kids don't recognize cues as well when the dog gets angry. Absolutely true. Bear's a sweet dog. I love Bear. Will I leave Bear unattended around an infant or a toddler? Never. And it has nothing to do with Bear's personality. He's a great dog. He's super gentle. But at the end of the day, he's a dog and he may not know or he may not be fully competent to know how gentle you have to be with a toddler. So never, never, never leave your child unattended with a dog. Jarolith, public health, wash your hands, get your vaccine, stay active, and don't listen to a damn thing Gwyneth Paltrow says. Goop is poop. Don't listen to anything that is said on that website. Do not buy any of their products because you are literally supporting a misinformation front. They have somehow created a multi-million, if not billion dollar industry. Sell Selling you products that are useless, potentially harmful, that distract you from real meaningful treatments for your conditions, there is no shortcut to good health. Goop is poop. Everyone's got good answers here. I'm just trying to make sure my belly button is clean. General rule, before you go in to get cut open, you wash yourself with soap. Any brand, unbranded. <laughs> and get inside the belly button. There's stuff in there. Many neurosurgeons I know are absolutely nuts about maintaining good posture. 
I'm nuts about nuts. My kids have never been allowed on a trampoline. I've had to deal with way too many liver and spleen injuries. I will always live close to a tertiary level hospital. Never let my kids play American football. There's a lot to say here. Tertiary level hospital, cool. The problem is you can get into accidents and stuff not near your home. What are you gonna do then? The trampoline thing is too much. That's the equivalent of me saying, I will not live near an area where my child has to cross the street because I've seen way too many car accidents. Yes but at the same time, why? Football, tough subject. New evidence coming out that chronic traumatic encephalopathy does happen. What that means for you is a personal decision. Do you want your child to face those risks or can you have them or encourage them to play another sport where they don't have to hit their heads. Just know that the risks that you're facing, like educate yourself on those risks. And also know that the risks aren't perfectly yet well established. We still have a lot more research to do before we know what's what. Psych addiction medicine, smash your sleep cycle. Keep in touch with five important people even if you have set calendar alerts and schedule phone calls. Only take mild altering substances, yes, including coffee and alcohol, I'm that boring, for a specific purpose. Who lives life like that? Ooh, should I have a coffee today? What is the purpose of this beverage? Ooh, a wine. With dinner? Ooh, what is the purpose of this beverage? We cannot all live lives in such a structured, detail-oriented manner. It just won't work for everybody. It's not really practical. So while good advice, a little too, I don't even know what I'm doing right now. And I still don't know what smash your sleep cycle is. But keeping in touch with five important people, setting alerts, I absolutely dig that. Forensic pathology, just enjoy your life. It can be over very soon. Oh my God, yes. I'm an internist and the same for me. I've seen patients of mine die so many ways over the past 20 years. I learned to do my best but don't obsess over health, which is what I've been saying this whole time. Car accidents, a bear in their sleep, aneurysm, bear in their sleep? God, I hope Bear doesn't do me in in my sleep. I have a couple of my own that have changed based on me actually being a family medicine doctor. One is never be afraid to ask the doctor that you're seeing how much experience they've had in treating someone with your diagnosis. If you have diabetes, ask them how many diabetic patients they've seen. If you're getting a surgery, ask them how many times they've performed this given surgery. It's really important to gauge the competence level of the doctor that you're seeing, because otherwise you're just sort of taking a chance. Second is to never become sedentary. When you don't move, when you're constantly seated or lying down, not moving around or exercising, a lot of things start to go wrong. Mental health starts to suffer, aches and pains start to begin, stiff back, difficult to move arthritic knees, weight gain, all of these things start happening all at the same time. And it's very difficult to break out of that once you've already established a sedentary lifestyle. So do everything in your power to at least go for a walk several times a day. If you're sitting for like 30 minutes to an hour, just get up and go get, get a glass of water. Movement is the treatment for many, many, many of my patients' complaints. It's incredible, but it actually works. As always, stay happy and healthy. Videos for you to click on. Which one are you going for? Pranking doctors? My personality? You wanna know my personality?